Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, you got, got it again. Got it. Hello, 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 and welcome to Women's Wisdom Wednesdays, where we come together every Wednesday to empower women just like you, foster connections, and thrive on our journey to surviving womanhood. Today, we have a very special guest joining us, and her name is Chris Carton, a remarkable survivor who has faced breast cancer and a subsequent diagnosis of stage four lung cancer. Her story is one of resilience and inspiration. But before we bring Chris on, let's take one moment to address our audience. We want to remind you all to visit our website, at www.survivingwomanhood.org, where you can find valuable resources, connect with other women, and stay updated on all of our upcoming episodes and the other offerings that we have for you. We encourage you to actively participate by asking questions and adding comments below on our Facebook page or wherever you are watching this. And if you have a story to share, we would love to hear it. This is a safe space to learn and grow together. So now let's meet Chris Carton. Chris is 70 years old, only three years older than me, Chris. And she embodies strength and perseverance. She survived breast cancer more than 10 years ago. So bravo. Thank you. Yes, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And after, after undergoing chemo and radiation therapy, she beat breast cancer. So that's a wonderful achievement, Chris. That's fantastic. However, in 2018, she received the news of a lung cancer diagnosis, which was determined to be a result of metastasis from the original breast cancer. So this is why now she is classified as having stage four cancer. Despite these challenges, Chris has found solace in personal therapies, such as ballroom dancing, gardening, which is also a personal favorite of mine, and peaceful countryside walks. Her story is a testament to the power of finding joy and peace amidst adversity. Chris, we are so honored to have you here today. It's incredible how you've navigated through these difficulties and found strength within yourself. And before we dive a little deeper, I just would like to introduce my beautiful co-host, Bianca Carton. And Bianca, do you want to say something about Chris? Yes, I do. Thank you, Casey. So I'm really, this is a really special guest for me that um, Chris is my mom uh, and I've witnessed her go through this, um, all these stages that she has gone through and how she's developed and changed and uh, how she has been such an inspiration. She's been so strong and defiant. Um, that's why she is one of the first people I wanted to have on, on here with us because her story has so much to offer to other people. Thank you very much. And we're, we're just so honored because it's wonderful that we can bring our fan here because they have wonderful stories. And I'm sure for all of you who are watching, there are people in your families who also have these wonderful stories of survival. We would love to hear about that. And if you think that someone in your family, or maybe even you, could be a guest with us and share your story of survival with women all around the globe, we would love to hear from you and possibly see you right here on a Women's Wisdom Wednesday. So Chris, can you share some of the challenges you've encountered during your journey and how you've managed to find strength and fulfillment in your life now? Gosh, that's a big one. <laughs> um, over the, from the beginning, when I was first diagnosed, 2009 right to now, um, I've always been aware that cancer has a range of possibilities that it may be treated and it may go away. And I was always aware 
that there was equally a chance that it might not go away, it might continue to spread. So my initial um, reaction when I was first diagnosed was one of horror, really. I was really upset that I got it. Um, it was just shock, basically, in the initial stages. Um, you basically think, why me? You never think it's going to happen to you. Well, I didn't. Um, but then from that point onwards, once you accept that that is the diagnosis and you, you have got it, it is then a case of being um, realistic, listening to what the doctors and the people advise you to do and the people around you. Getting, I got a lot of strength from reading stories about people who had encountered breast cancer before. And I continue to do this to this day. I take a great deal of interest online reading about people um, that have survived. Um, and I find that that gives me a lot of hope to think that if they can do it, so can I. And I think the most important thing to surviving any form of cancer is to draw strength from the friends and the people around you. Whether you know them personally or not, I think that is the, one of the biggest strengths you've got, that people around you, you're not on your own. You're one of probably many thousands that are dealing with this at any one time. And it's just to, to stay positive. I think that's really, really important to stay positive and be hopeful that things will get better and will improve. And I think that's really key mentally in, in the approach to dealing with it. Thank you. So, Mum, I know um, the things that how you like to spend your free time and things like that. I know your um, your passion has been for a very long time, ballroom dancing and things like this. How do you think all of those um, activities that you enjoy so much have helped you during this this period of time now and what first when you first had cancer as well? Well, all the way through. I found that doing something I enjoy doing gives me something to look forward to, gives me something to aim to. Mm. I mean, recently, as you probably, as you know, I've been um, started to go on dance holidays. That's something I've only recently done in the last four or five years, although I've been dancing for over 20 years now. Um, but I started to go away on for weeks at a time where I just dance in the morning, dance in the afternoon, and I enjoy it. And I think whatever your passion is, if when you struggle with a diagnosis like cancer, if you have things that in your life that you really enjoy and look forward, it helps to take your mind away from things and focus on the positive. There's obviously the other thing that's really important is the physical aspect of making your body continue to function and do things. Mm. I've never been a sit at home, stay at home person, as you know. I've always been a get up and go and let's get it done job type of person. So I also <laughs> think apart from doing the activities, which I love. I've always loved gardening. I've always loved dancing. Um, I've always loved walking, although I don't do as much of this as I used to do um, because of the breathing problems that I have now. I've got cancer in my lungs. That has limited it more slowly. I still do do it, but not in the same quantity. But the other thing is to take time to relax. And that's the other key. And make sure when you feel you're reached your physical limit to take time out to relax and recuperate ready for the next search that's how and, I do it and something I've always admired about you mum is that you're you've always had such a positive outlook um even when we're going through all this all together it's because we will collectively go through this together um but you've always had a really positive mindset how how did you cultivate that how how did you maintain that was I honestly all, and, and was it always authentic did you always do that some was it sometimes you didn't feel that way but you were you were doing it anyway how how did you do well, that what the way I put it to my doctor and I put it to my doctor last week when I saw her I want to stay as normal as possible for as long as possible there may come a time when that doesn't isn't possible but even when I was going through right at the beginning severe chemotherapy and I lost my hair um and I was feeling weak I still would go to work every day and I would still sit at my desk. And if I got hot, I'd take my wig off and stick it on the computer and wait till I called down and put it back on again. And they used to <laughs> laugh at me. I think humor is really enlightening, but also a positive approach to thinking, well, it's just a temporary arrangement. You know, they told me when I lost my hair, it would come back. It did. That's fine. Um, 
and you know I just wanted people as possible to treat me as normal as possible and obviously having those people around me even when I was going undergoing chemotherapy was really really helpful because people did support me by showing their willingness to treat me as if I was not going to to grow horns out my head when, when I didn't have any hair. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That is, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to have a little look to see if there's someone online watching mum. But I, the, one of the things now is obviously the breast cancer is something that for us women is something that we need to be vigilant about and things like that. And we should be aware of um, yeah. what advice would you give to women by myself or, or, or women of all ages, what we should do oh. in terms of being aware of breast cancer? And, yeah. And, it's really, really important that you check your breasts regularly, um, check for lumps. And in my case, it was a lump that I found just as they desired, um, described it. Um, make sure you go to your reg regular screenings, your mammograms and that, because if the sooner they detect it, the quick, the more likely they are to be able to give you a good diagnosis and to cure it. It is possible if you do get symptoms and some people do tend to fright, get frightened when they find them, don't shy away from going to your doctors. Go as soon as you can. And as soon as you can get help, your survival rates are far, far better. Um, that, that's the most important thing. Be vigilant, check your breasts. And if you do actually get the symptoms, make sure you do something about it, not try to ignore it and, and not deal with it. I, I think that's really key. And what about I, what living with it and things they can do in their life other than the treatments and things like that? Living with it, that's very difficult because as a woman, I remember when I first had my mastectomy and I went down for the operation and you were there on that day, I found that extremely upsetting. Um, the fact that I was going to lose my breast, it felt to me like I was going to be less of a woman and that was the emotional stress that built up in me. Um, very luckily, I had friends around me of my same age group and compatriots who understood what I was going through and took a great deal of time to support me. A couple of my friends took me away to a health farm for a few days and we had a few days just relaxing and propping around in, in our bathrobes and just doing things like yoga and swimming just to make us make me feel better. And I'm really grateful to those friends who I'm still friends with to this day. Um, Without their support, I don't think I would have found it as easy to get through. And then eventually, I just came to terms with the fact, well, I haven't got um, a breast. In fact, I went dancing last night. I must tell you the story. And my dance teacher at the dance place I go to last night, who is also 70 by pure coincidence, um, has also had a mastectomy. And she said, I have a nickname for myself, Christine. And she does what I do. She, uses, she said, I call myself One Breast Linda. <laughs> that's my nickname and I went oh <laughs> I love that oh, I absolutely love that that's wonderful because we what else can we do right I mean we have only a couple of choices yeah we have a couple of choices we can wallow or we can survive right we can thrive and um, find those moments of humor in what we're going through and, and those wonderful people around us. And it's, it's one of those things that um, I'm a cancer survivor myself. And I, I think the thing that I found that I hear you saying as well is those people around you to support you are so vital to recovery, I think, and the way we get through it. And our family and, and friends, they're wonderful. But those people who are, are going through or have gone through some of the same things that we are experiencing in the moment, they have the greatest insight, I think, to, to our experiences. And having support from those people and being able to look at them and see how they've survived and how they've thrived through their treatments and through their diagnoses and things like that. And for our audience and people out there who might be going through something similar now, to see you and hear your story and how you've found um, time to laugh and, and things 
that bring you joy in those moments, right? Even during the devastating diagnosis and treatments and all of the things that we go through, you have found humor. And I think that's just amazing and also a testament. It also gives me some insight into the strength of your daughter, right? Yeah. I, it's clear It's clear that some of that has rubbed off on her. And that's that's an amazing thing to be able to see for me personally. So we got a little follow-up here. Can you share some insights on maybe some holistic treatments or practices that have complemented your medical treatments and supported your overall well-being during your recovery time? Yeah, I've had very limited um, experience of holistic treatments. To be fair, I believe very much in what the medical science offers us in courses and treatments. And I have opted to go that way predominantly taking different medications or whatever that they've just they they've offered to me and choosing which ones to do um there are lots of different drugs on the market these days but right at the very beginning when I was initially diagnosed and I was hospitalized a couple of times um because of the side effects of the chemotherapy um here in England um we have a great team of Macmillan cancer nurses who offer emotional support so they have drop-in centers where you can go and have a chat and then emotionally be supported by just talking to someone who's experienced and understands what you're going through I had reflexology on my feet at one point when I was hospitalized and I was in hospital they thought with some major infection in the area I'd been operated on and I found that very relaxing um, I also have a very close friend who's a spiritualist and she, this year actually, put her hands on me to try to empower me with her healing properties that she believes very strongly in. Um, and I, in all of these things, it's the touching of people too and holding people in whatever way that seems to give you support and makes you feel valued and uh, really positive and I think the whole thing through all this is whatever however you feel down the most important thing is to make sure you come back feeling more positive it's a big learning curve or it was for me and I realized for some people they find it far more difficult to come to terms with than perhaps I've done but I think if you can pull on the strength of people around you and if holistic therapies is what you feel will help you more, then I think there's nothing wrong with that. Nutrition is very good too, looking at your diet. Um, my children, as you probably know, have put me down <laughs> the organic route to the extent that I'm a bit fanatical about it now, but that's been something they've encouraged me to do. <laughs> I grow my own vegetables now and I have to read all the labels on the packets to make sure it's got the right ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> well i guess they could have given you a worse habit <laughs> they could. but i have lost quite a bit of weight and i've got a much better figure than i had when i started out well, so i feel much happier in my appearance and i think that's another thing is taking pride in your appearance and doing the best you can makes you feel good as a woman i think feeling good is all about how you feel about yourself and you know if if you want to go and have your nails done or you want to relax and, and, and buy yourself a new dress, if that makes you feel good, that's a treatment. That's my feeling. Where and before, I, do you think you do more of that it. now? Sorry? Um, do you do think you do more of that now than you used I to? I do. I don't feel so guilty. I, before, I would be much more careful with my money. But now the priorities change because it's not about buying items to adorn my shelves at home it's all about more about spending time and money on myself that includes hobbies but it also includes things like having your hair done and your makeup and you know just going to the ped uh, the podiatrist to have your feet done it, it's a treat that perhaps I spend more time doing now and I that's, think that's important yeah. that's great that is that is really wonderful advice that is wonderful advice. Thank you so much. 
Yeah. And I hope anyone who's going through that with me um, at the time I am now understands and 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 takes 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 time to think about themselves more in light of what I said, because I think you should just put yourself first and then everything will come better for you. I'm sure that's how yeah. it will. Be. No, I've definitely seen a change in those in those aspects, mum, over time. Yes. Learn to <laughs> relax things like this you like I say that's why I wanted you to be on on here with us because it's an inspiring story mm-hmm. and I think it's something that is an important story for other people to hear that's why being like in this forum so people can hear and see um the experience you've had um and hopefully what we'll have is people taking some advice from you because you've done this so successfully um and perhaps they'll share their stories with us too so on the Facebook live that's, that's rolling right now hopefully some people will either leave comments or questions or suggestions of other people who've got stories similar to yours because I think it's all about sharing these stories between us as women I think these things are really important there's so many things we don't speak about um and I think we need to share those more as women exactly I think the most important thing is is if you particularly if you're having a a bit of a downtime is to talk about it and share how you're feeling so other people can support you and that can get you back up again I think talking is a great way of surviving it really is and it's really important not to hide away but to talk and share with with people you feel close to that how you're feeling and they will be there for you and that will bring you through I'm sure and I hope other people are doing the same That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I think Bianca has one more question for you, Chris. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so in terms of uh, um, women who are have been through this situation, who have come, th- who have had a diagnosis and things like this, what are the key points you would say um, f- for women? What should they be thinking about? What should they prioritize? Things like this. That's a difficult one, Bianca, and I'll tell you why, because we're all, all we've all got different lives and we've all got different we, we may be at different stages in our lives. So our priorities aren't based on the cancer. They're based on our situations and they may vary. I mean, if you've got very young children, for example, you may be interested in wanting to shield them from the, the, the effects of it as long as possible. Um, luckily, because my children are older, I've been able to be open and honest with them and share and they've been able to accept that that's good but the most important thing whatever your age and whatever your situation is to understand yourself and what makes you happy because if you're happy and you're positive the people around you even if you're going through tough times will be with you and I think right from the very beginning you've picked up on the fact that humor is very therapeutic and even if you can laugh at yourself when you're feeling down it's a great uplift. But priorities are a really difficult one because priorities do vary. That it may be just a functional priority about being able to pay your bills that's that's key in your mind when you become ill. It may be the fact you can't go to work and earn any money. But then then maybe uh, for other people that may not be an issue. Um, it's, it's a case of knowing yourself, knowing what's going to make you um, happiest and take the most pressure away from your life and then prioritize. But the most important thing of all when you have been diagnosed is to make sure you put yourself at that top of that list of priorities. You are the only person that can make yourself positive in the end. People can affect you, but it's up to you to make it happen. And that's really important, I feel. Fantastic. Chris, thank you so much. I just want to summarize a little bit and and bullet point some of the key takeaways here. And please feel free to correct anything that I'm saying or add anything that you feel I'm leaving out. Um, So what I would say I have gotten from this, hearing you uh, share your story is for number one, early diagnosis is key. So to be sure that all of you women out there no matter your age, that you are doing your monthly self-breast examinations because you know your body better than anyone else. 
And if you are doing this on the monthly, then you will notice if there are any changes. So please, I think all three of us would agree that this is something we would love for you to take away from today. That's one. Also that prioritizing yourself, your needs, your wants is vital to your recovery. Because again, no one knows you better than you do. No one knows what your needs are more than you do. So honor yourself during this time. Make you the number one priority. And then again, something so important, laughter can be the best medicine. So if you can get a little bit of humor into your life, I know I used to watch a lot of funny movies, um, funny television shows. Like if I was you know, not having a very good day, if I wasn't feeling very well, or, you know, if the chemo was upsetting me a bit, I would, I would turn on one of my favorite funny movies and watch that during, during that time. And it was so helpful. And uh, lastly, what I want to say is have a support group, your family, your friends. If, if you don't have family and friends around you, which some people don't, Reach out to others. Talk to the people where you're having your treatment. There's generally a support group system when you are going through your oncologist or through the clinic where you're getting your treatments. Speak to them and ask about a support group. And if there isn't one available, you could start your own. And if you have any questions about how to do that, please contact us. I have facilitated support groups for cancer survivors for years. I can help you get started with that. And you can even do it online. So, so there are a lot of possibilities for you to find the support that is going to be so very helpful for you. So Chris, is there anything else that you would like to add or correct about my key takeaways? And so no, I think I think you summed that up really, really well. Thank you. Of, of what's key in keeping yourself positive and to, to beating the cancer. I think those things are really key. The support particularly and the support groups. Yes, um, I'd forgotten that I joined one of those at one period in time where that's really important to, to, to interact with other people who are going through the same thing is so helpful so helpful because we all understand each other and what we're we're experiencing and that is quite helpful too yeah thank you lets, very much it lets you know you're not alone yes right? that's you're, key mm -hmm, that you're not alone so everyone let's take a moment to appreciate and thank chris for sharing her inspiring story and her journey with us her strength and resilience are truly remarkable. And I'm Casey Conrad, well-being specialist and whole life coach. And we, Bianca and I, invite you, our viewers, to share your stories, suggest future topics or guests with us, and actively engage with the surviving womanhood community. And please remember to mark your calendars and join us for our next Women's Wisdom Wednesdays episode on July 12th, where our guest, Sarah Hammond, will be here to share her survival story of life and adulting after losing both of her parents. And before we wrap up, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to Chris. You were an incredible guest. Thank you so much for sharing. I have heard so much about you for so many years that I can't even believe I've never met you until now. <laughs> so this has thank been- you, and Thank you very much, Casey and Bianca for inviting me. Um, Thanks, it was quite a surprise, but I'm pleased I did it. I thank hope someone will gain something from, the not, from what I've said today, well, if only hope. I'm sure they will. Your story serves as an inspiration to all of us. And again, if you've been touched by Chris's story or you have an experience you want to share or any questions for Chris, please share them in a comment below. We'll make sure that she gets them 
and that we get an answer for you or just to leave a comment and let Chris know how much you appreciate her being here and sharing her story. We value your voice and we want to create a community where we can all learn and grow together. So again, don't forget to mark your calendars for next Wednesday for our next episode of Women's Wisdom Wednesdays. Together, we'll continue to explore the remarkable survival stories of women who have faced adversity with courage and resilience. And Bianca, is there anything else you would like to say? No, I just want to say thank you, Mom, for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> and thank all of you for being thank part you. of this wonderful, empowering community. And until next time, we can navigate the challenges together, celebrate our successes, and thrive as women on our journey to surviving womanhood. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs>